with you for something you've done, but you approached me before the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots, and you were really ticked off. And you thought I had written something, and you were very angry, and then you just walked away. And I just said, man, I better Google myself and Doug Baldwin to see what, if anything, I had written, and I couldn't find anything. And so this year at training camp, it's a year and a half later, at training camp, you see me, I come up to you, I was going to say something to you, and you just said, man, I'm, I'm really sorry, I, you know, for what I did. And there aren't many guys who do that. Whether they realize that what they did was wrong, there aren't many guys who will do that. And so I think you deserve credit for basically just walking up to somebody who you may have wronged and try to make it right. And I just wanted to tell you I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. You know, it did bother me for that year and a half. (laughs) It did bother me because, you know. You know what it was? I, I think it was this. There were so many people dogging you guys. (laughs) <laughs> there were so many people who were saying, oh, man, they got to win in spite of their receivers. You know, that I, when I, what I thought that day is I'm just representative <laughs> of the larger mass media, you know? No, it, w- it was a, a specific article. It came from MMQB. And I, you know, in my haste and frustration, I didn't fully look at uh, who the author was. And I just saw your name somewhere around it and assumed it was you. And so... You know, when I saw you on the field, you you became the next target. But uh, again, you know, I deeply regret that because uh, you know I was wrong. No, it's not anything you need to deeply regret. And I appreciate you saying something. My last question for you is: It's so hard to stay on top in this game as a player and as a team, and yet you guys and you guys have the mantle. You guys have everybody aiming at you every year it's a huge game when you come to town so do you feel that as a player do you guys feel that as a team and how hard is it in this game to stay on top yes we do feel it you know we think that uh there's been a target on our backs for a while the seattle seahawks you know they we've been a target for a while and how do we stay on top or how do we stay in the moment? It, it's, it's just that. It's staying in the moment, I should say. Uh, we, we preach it in our meetings. We practice it all the time. It's, it's not about the next opponent. It's not about, it's really not even about our opponent. It's about us and staying in the moment and, and finding the best in ourselves. And that's the way that we do it. You know, if we can focus on us, if we can focus on the task at hand rather than the outcome, then we give ourselves the best opportunity to go out there and perform at a high level. And so we do that in practice. We do that in the meeting rooms. And eventually it bleeds into the game and it gives us, like I said, the best opportunity to win. You know, that's that's our, our methodology. That's our, our mindset when we go into these games is um, if we can find our best, then that's really all that we need to do. And really, that's all we can control. So that's the way we look at it. Doug Baldwin, thanks for joining me on the podcast. Of course. Thanks for having me. It's the MMQB Podcast. Two very enlightening guests this week, Drew Brees and Doug Baldwin. It's guests like that that make this podcast so much fun for me to do, and I hope you're enjoying it as well. Now, a few thoughts about the NFL at the quarter pole. So no one, I think, would have been surprised if you were to be told that The New England Patriots had done okay in Tom Brady's absence. But I think those around the league are saying, hey, boy, we're glad they lost one before they got Brady back. I mean, they could go for another undefeated season. I had a different reaction. And my reaction was that I think the New England Patriots performed incredibly well, all things considered, without Tom Brady. And now that Brady comes back for week five at Cleveland, I think that the New England Patriots are going to show the rest of the league that Brady, even at age 39, is going to be able to perform well enough for New England to threaten Denver for home field advantage in the AFC. Now, the one thing that's going to happen with Brady, and I talked to somebody who's close to him last week, he said, look, Tom is not going to bring into his locker room all this anger at the NFL and 
and all this stuff he wants to stick to Roger Goodell or anything like that. He's going to come in and just concentrate on football. If I've learned one thing about Tom Brady in the 15 years that I've known him, it is this. It is about the team. And I know that's a cliche. It really is. Because everybody looks out for himself. We all know that. But with Tom Brady, he is the perfect captain of the ship for Bill Belichick. He realizes fully when he can't play at the level that he's playing at right now, Bill Belichick is going to move on from him. He knows that, and he's fairly comfortable with that. But I don't think he's anywhere near that level right now. I think Brady comes back, plays exceedingly well, and I think it comes down to week 17 in this NFL season for home field in the AFC between New England and Denver. I think it's going to be a great, great race. Fasten your seatbelt. That is not, however, the team that I think is going to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. I think it's going to be one of the wild cards, Pittsburgh. I think Cincinnati is going to win that division, and Pittsburgh is going to come on because I think their offense by the end of the year is going to be unstoppable. I think the AFC race is going to be fantastic, and I think that the best three teams in football by the end of the season just might reside in the American Football Conference. Thanks to my guests, Drew Brees and Doug Baldwin. If you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to listen and subscribe to other great episodes in the MMQB series, such as my conversations with John Elway, Bruce Arians, and Brandon Marshall. You can find these on the MMQB.com or iTunes or anywhere you get your podcasts. And don't forget to leave a review while you're there. Listen to other podcasts in our series as well, with Albert Breer, Gary Grambling, and Andy Benoit. Thanks to the folks at Digital Media for their production work, and thanks, of course, to my sponsors, SeatGeek and MyBookie. Please support them the way they support this podcast. And I'll see you next week. This has been a Digital Media production. Find your voice.